Hey guys! Oh, ooh, this is too close. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Um. Hey guys. Anyway, uh. There we go. Hey guys! Welcome to my hashtag Lady People, the first episode. I know it's kind of been late on this, um, but some stuff's been going on, kind of just been relaxing, chilling out. So, yes, I'm really excited. This is my first one ever. Besides so, you, no, there's a visual announcement, but whatever. We don't count that. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the first ass hashtag Lady People. Um, if you're wondering why I made it hashtag Lady People, I just thought because it was funny. <laughs> because I think people say hashtag way too much. Um, so, I thought I'd make it a joke. Anyway, um, so this is the first episode, which I'm so excited about. I will be having a launch party video coming up really, really soon. Um, so check it out. See, I have a lot of the videos I have to update on. Um, just going out, hanging out stuff. My birthday slash is going to be some interview that I have to get up. My other hashtag video videos. I have a couple coming up really soon. Um, so check those out, and uh, my baby my which I have to still get done. Um, those will have to be up delayed a little bit because I've done a lot of YouTubing this weekend and it's just crazy and I just don't, I kind of need a break. <laughs> Not like a break like I had the last week where I haven't been taping for a while, um, but just kind of like, just, I think four or five taping a day is kind of like an overboard, especially for me. So um, I may not do another for a couple of days. So check those out. I will be hopefully doing a week video next week. If not, then I'll do another video that week. But I'm going to try to start doing more updates weekly. Um, as I said in the other videos, I'm not going to be forcing this up the tape all the time. So if you don't see a video one or two weeks, um, at any point in this journey, uh, it is me that you know, I'm feeling well or that I'm having a really extreme symptom and I or just I feel like I need a day off or I'm not feeling like video taping. Or I'm just too busy or something, I don't know. Um, I'm not one of those YouTubers that's gonna say, that can tell to say, okay, I'm gonna be a tape every day, or I'm gonna be a tape every week. I'm uh, not that person, so honestly, I'm not gonna push myself. Um, like, yes. Um, so, sorry about that, but I will be tape as much as possible, I love them puzzles, and we'll see. So, if I feel like it, I will, if I don't, I don't. So I'll not make a big process, but I will get those videos done. Uh, also, I'm really excited because I mentioned in my announcement video, I am doing... I can't even know if you see me. <laughs> huh. There we go. <laughs> I feel like I'm super far away. So yeah. Anyway, the next thing the announcement is that I am doing VEDA! Which is, for people who don't know, is vlog every day in April, and you also can do it in August. Which means, obviously, my thing before about not letting me doesn't really count this month because I'm continue trying to vlog already and do a lot of fun things like uh, juice diet and exercising and shopping wheels and all that. So that won't count. But if I don't play vlogging one two days, you gotta, you gotta give me a break because my life isn't that interesting right now and I'm pregnant, so it's kind of hard for me to push yourself to vlog and do stuff every day, so, yeah, even though I am in second term, so it's supposed to be easier, it's still hard, so, we'll see, hopefully I'll get to vlog every day and do something interesting and not, I'm not push myself, I don't want to waste my, your time, my time making something that's boring, so, yeah, anyway, as I said, this is the first ever, um, hashtag lazy people video, and for this video, I will be doing something really exciting. I'm going to be doing my first ever. What is this? You can see. I need to kind of bend this a little bit. There we go. I'm going to be doing. First episode is hashtag legal exercising. Yes. Uh, if you're like me, you hate exercise. You would never want to exercise. You don't want to walk, you don't want to jog, you don't want to go on treadmill, you don't want to do anything. Like, you're just like me. When I was in high school, which wasn't that long ago, if, I, if there was anything I could do to get a gym class, I would. I hate, well, I don't, and it's not that I hate exercising sports and that. It's just like, 
I want to do when I feel like doing it, that's it. Nothing else. Um, so, like, I didn't like doing sports in school, which maybe had to do with the fact that the boys were really aggressive and I was afraid of breaking my face. Um, I didn't like walking in the track, I didn't like, um, I didn't like anything, pretty much. I didn't like yoga, I found it extremely boring. Uh, I hate the tread thingy, I hate walking on a treadmill. The only thing I did was the bicycle, and that's because I could sit and do nothing, and the teacher didn't care. Um, so yeah, if, but if you're also like me, you do have a really bad metabolism, so you don't have to worry about gaining weight, but as you know, being pregnant has made me gain weight, um, and also I have a kind of weird fat belly thing going on, and now that I'm pregnant, it kind of got aggravated, so I look even fatter, obviously most people don't notice, but I do, and it makes me feel really uncomfortable and really subconscious a little bit, um, so, I don't know if it's because I don't look as big as I feel, or I look as big as I think I look, or if it's just because um, the way I'm built, it's not round enough to look like a pregnant belly, or it's just, I hide it so often no one can tell. I don't know. Um, I think it looks pretty big. Um, if you guys want a glimpse of it, here it is. That's how big it is. Obviously I'm a little bit bloated, so it looks a little bit bigger than it probably looks in camera. Um, that's how it actually looks in general, I think. This part, there we go, that's actually how it looks in general. This part's a little bit flabbier than usual. Um, yes, as you can see, the top part of my belly is kind of flat because the fat has kind of built up on it, so it looks a little bit bigger, and because this part of my hair has grown more, it doesn't look as big a difference to other people because the ratio between the belly and this part has not grown because they're both growing um, at the same rate at the same time so it's kind of hard to tell but for me I can definitely tell the difference between both of them um, and so it's often not as big as some bellies because I was unnormally skinny and I had a flab anyway so it's not as big a difference as it may be to some other people but it is definitely a difference from how you look, and if you look at some pretty places, you, you will, and if you're like me, you will look for agree that you can see a difference between them now, even though you had a flap, and it wasn't as flat, and it may not look as different because of the ratio, you can definitely tell, and you will definitely agree with me, that you can see a difference, and of course, I'm one of those people that kind of frets, not about being weight or anything, but like, if I get like, plus one seven, I kind of freaking know, like, go one or five. I'm like, because that's my normal weight. I know it's really underweight, but that's how I, I kind of always been. You know, because I'm tall and everything, and uh, everything I eat kind of just like slides right out. Like, it, it doesn't say what thing. <laughs> I have that kind of metabolism. Uh, so I never really had to work out, and I've always been really underweight. So people, uh, so I, it's kind of like um, a little bit of a big change for me to be like this. So I feel a little bit conscious, a little bit weird, you know. And, as I said, I don't exercise, so there's a problem, because you're supposed to exercise. Although you get really fat, and although you know, whatever, I don't know, it's, it's like a whole big thing. And more is that, you're supposed to do special exercises when you get to a, to a certain point called Kegel exercises to help you weight your body. And of course, I'm one of the people that I hate going to the bathroom for instance, so I hold it in. And that kind of is my Kegel exercise for the day, but it's kind of stupid because it's not a good idea to hold it. Or because you can get a body pressure, but you know, that's you mind. We're not going into that. Anyway, so if you're like me, you don't probably you look fat, and you always been under really, really skinny, and now you're self-conscious, and you hate exercise, it's kind of like a big dilemma here because on one hand you hate exercising and you never had to, on the other hand you look really big and different, and you feel horrible, and so you kind of need to exercise because you're full exercise and it will make you feel better, but you're kind of lazy and you don't want, to, so you have a whole big dilemma here. Like, what do you do? I don't get it. Okay, so your two parts. See, this is your two part, I think. I, we'll stick with two part for now. Uh, two part plan to looking great, feeling great while pregnant for a skinny girl. And this also works for not girls, so this is not like discriminatory. Uh, this happened to be skinny, so I'm calling this hashtag skinny people fitness plan, fitness and nutrition plan. Uh, or hashtag skinny people stay skinny. Okay, oh, that, that, that's what we'll call it. Hashtag CB will say skinny. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, so, 
if you're like me, you have to walk all over this house, up and down, all around, just get anything done. Um, so that is one part of the plan I call the walk of shame. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the bit's a little bit weird. Um, the walk of shame. So, first things first. What I do is every... I get put alarm for every two hours for a period of six hours. I make sure that I go up and down the stairs. And I call it my walk of shame. Why, me, why I call it a walk of shame is because what I do is I leave something upstairs. Or it be my phone, my iPod, whatever. And I put an alarm on it every two hours. And what I do is I put it really loud. I put a really annoying ringtone on it. Like for me, I have an annoying orange ringtone on my tablet. And I leave it upstairs and it's really loud. And you can hear all the downstairs. That's the, this is the biggest point of all. If you cannot hear it downstairs, it is not loud enough. You need to get a louder noise. And if it does not make you super irritated to the point you want to do it against the wall, it's not annoying enough. You need extremely annoying, like so annoying you want to throw it out the window and you don't care if you break it. That's how annoying this thing is. You hear it, it will make you want to go upstairs. That's how you do it. So you go up, you shut off, you go down. Every two hours, that's three times, there's your walk of shame. If you do it three times a day, it's pretty much like walking on a treadmill. Um, another thing I like to do is uh, something I call the lay down. Okay. So what the lay down is, is, um, what's well, very simple. You lay on something really, really flat, and you make sure you have something under your butt. Because if you're like me, your butt's curved, and it's just annoying. <laughs> uh, but even your butt's not curved. And what you do, is you lay down your side. I know I said lay back, but you lay down on the back, and then you roll over to your side. Because that's how people usually get on their side. And what you do is you, you have to, it has to be like a, something that has an edge. So you can lean back against the edge. Like for example, hold on, can you see it? See, the couch, there we go. See the couch has an backing. So you, so you, you do is you lay flat against this back. So, for example, like this. See, I'm over against the back, but I'm also not really comfortable because this is a really flimsy couch. That's another point. You need to have a, a strong, steady thing without like the bumps between the cushions and whatever, which is why I recommend a pillow under your butt so it's less bumpy. <laughs> um, so uh, your pregnancy will be really good for this. So you have a long body pill to put underneath you, so it's less bumpy. And also, you're supposed to, it's, you're supposed to be against. The, I'm more in the middle, but you're supposed to be at the end of it. So, anyway, yeah, that's that's the example of what you should look at. Okay, so yeah, so you lean at that, and you kind of go. You have to like make sure. And when I say, um, this is a little bit difficult to explain. Okay, so what you do is, um, you have to lean your back against it, and then you have to, the head, the problem is, the head of the couch cannot be so high that you can't reach over it. Like, you have to be reached over it. So, like, a better example, actually, would be this couch. Because this couch has an arm thing that you can reach over very, very well. Um, so, this is co called, what I call, as I say, the lay down. So you lean your feet back, you ha and you have your back and sit, and you have to reach the, so if you're lying on this side, you have to reach this arm over, and you have to reach the arm side, arm, this thing, over here. So, you're laying this way, with, your left arm on this side <laughs> and you reach your right arm over to reach the arm on the left side and you have to reach like that. It's kind of like bending over. 
but this is a so it's like doing this but it's kind of adapted for pregnant women so they don't have to change your body as much so you're laying down you're just reaching over and you reach over the left arm of the chair to pick up a book something really really light that you won't have a hard time picking up because if you in your really really early stages of pregnancy you can obviously use like a weight or something but once you get a little bit more advanced it could be a really bad thing to you because you can strain yourself, you can hurt the baby, you don't want to do that. And it's also harder for you to pick up a weight with one arm. So pick something like a book, uh, a flyer, something that has a little bit of weight to it. Well, actually, not fire, fire is bad too. Fire is not heavy enough. You need something with a little bit of weight with it, that you could, but you can still pick up. So, as I said, you lean against the back, you're lying down. And you have to reach your arm over the arm of the ch on the on the opposite side. So if you're laying this way, your right arm goes over the uh, uh, chair arm that's on the left or near your head. Yeah, that's very good. Your arm, the opposite arm, goes over your head. So you're laying on your left. Your right arm goes over the left, and you reach down. You pick up a book, put it aside, roll over, do the same thing on the left side. And that's a good way to kind of exercise this part of your body, as well as a little bit of your muscles, to kind of like trim it a little bit without putting too much strain on it. So that's the lay down part too. Uh, now, the last part I call is the chair. The chair is called the chair because you sit on a chair, obviously. It's like not like science. So, for example, um, when you sit on a chair though, the important thing is to remember, it cannot be too low, it cannot be tight. So, to measure how high the chair should be, obviously, it should meet halfway between your knee and your thigh. If it does not, if it's higher than that or lower than that, it's too high, it's too low. Don't do that. So, for example, these boxes over here, they meet right by my thigh. They're a little bit higher, than actually, in the middle of my thigh, not even my thigh, but... They're a little bit higher, so they're too high. But this table, or this chair right here, you can't see them, but yeah. Hold on, I will move this thing. There we go. I don't even know if you can see it, but up. Anyway, those are too low because they're right by me, and that is way too low. So, a good actual chair. See? This is too low because it's right by me. So, what you would need is something like hmm, I'm trying to find something but it's not really easy to find something at China. Um you know what? We'll stick with the chair because you know what, even though it's high, it's not that much higher. So yeah. Anyway, so this will be what we call the chair. Okay. See, it's not too much higher, it's a little bit higher. But, because I'm tall, it'll work. So what you do is you sit on the chair with your weight, and hopefully this chair has a backing, because this will make it so much easier. And I'm afraid to sit on this, actually. Uh, okay, so you sit on it, you have back, and what you do is you do your legs up. Here, you do this thing. So you're, this, the reason that it has to be mid is so you can sit all the way back. And it won't feel like your feet can touch the floor, but it won't like feel like you're straining to put your knees all the way up. Um, so this is your the chair because you lift your knees all the way here while sitting. And then here's the fun part. If you want a little straining, you can go in a higher chair, which would, I think, be a little bit higher than this. Um, as long as you remember, as long as your feet touch ground, it's still okay. Even if it's not exactly the middle of the thigh, if you can still reach the ground, it's fine. Um, but yeah. Anyway, what you do for a little bit more leverage is you lean back against the back. Hopefully you have a back. If you don't have a back, it wouldn't try this. Um, obviously I don't have a back, so I'm not going to try it. But um, you lean back, you sit on it, you put pressure on your hands, make sure they're really flat, and they're spaced out wide enough that you have enough leverage. And then you lift your knees over time and make sure. So what you do is you lift your knees from the ground, both of them at the same time, and then you do chin, 
you do your knee ups with your feet not touching the ground. Make sure they're straight, but make sure they do not touch the ground. So they could be out straight in front of you, they could be straight out on an angle in front of you, whatever makes you feel comfortable. They could be kind of like curled up a little bit, and then you just do knee ups from curls. Um, whatever makes you feel comfortable. But the biggest thing of this thing is that you have to make sure you is evenly strip up between your hands because otherwise one of the hands may get tired and then you may end up hurting yourself. So, the first chair would be just you're doing your regular knee ups while sitting down with your feet still putting on the ground. And the second one would just be putting all your weight in your hands, your feet don't touch the ground, and you do chin ups from there. Um, so, that is the chair. So, obviously, we'll go over the steps again. <laughs> Um, the first one I called the, um, lay down, I think. Was this lay? Yeah. No, that wasn't the lay down. It was called the walk of shame. No. Yeah. So the walk of shame. Lay something really loud, knowing upstairs, every two hours with the alarm, go up and down, up and down, six, for six hours, continuous two hours. That's three times a day, you're good to go. Uh, the lay down, you lay out against a flat backing of a really long couch, put a pillow on you do if it's rumpy. Um, Make sure it's really flat, straight, hard bomb, not too hard, it feels awkward. And you, when you bring which way you lead down, the outside arm goes with the arm, make sure arm is not too high, reach for something not too heavy like a book, or a notebook, or something that has weight put up onto it. Pick it up, then switch sides, do this twice if you're feeling knee on both sides. Now make sure once you're done with one side, you roll over on your back, not your stomach. So you roll over. Rolling over will give you more of a leverage with your back. So like exercise your back as well. If you get up and do it it's a little it's a whole big meal. So just roll over. Um so that was that make sure the books do two two times if you're feeling eh and if you're feeling more you could try three or four times. I wouldn't do more than that because five times kind of stretching it. And make sure that you use the same book. And you place it the same way, so it's the same amount on each side. So I would recommend a notebook, uh, just a regular writing notebook. You can get the the marble colored ones, the marble ones, um, from any drugstore or whatever, and uh, put it in the middle, about arm's length away. I think that would work pretty well. Um, yeah, that would be called the lay down. And as I said, the chair, chairs, you see again something about mid knee high as long as you touch ground, you're going to be moved tired in mid high, mid thigh high, and you you sit in a chair, hopefully you have a back, you, and you just do knee ups while leaning straight against the back, which means you don't lean forward, so you knee knees, you're sitting down, your back is straight against the thing, and your knees have to come somewhere around this area on their own, without bending your back or your knee. If you can get to this area, it's fine. As long as just try to get as high as you can. Uh, and if you want for something a little more of an edge, make sh you put, instead of keeping your feet on the ground, you keep them midair when you do knee ups. And those are my three hashtag leave people hashtag skinny people stay skinny exercise routine. Um, and remember, this is not only for skinny people, not only for pregnant people, anybody just for your pregnant, fat, skinny, not fat, but you know. A little bit overweight of um, what you're pregnant, not pregnant, skinny, overweight, in the middle, whatever. Anybody could do it. So, um, that would be the three of my most recommended delayed people workouts because you could do this when you're sitting watching TV. You're watching your TV, you're in the middle of commercial, you just do chins like you're sitting there, you could lay down and do. The thing while you're watching TV, it's very simple, it's very easy. You could do all this on one couch watching TV, so you never have to move. See, three simple exercises that you can do without moving. And of course, the walk of shame, you obviously have to get up. But if your couch is like mine, it's right near a basement stairs while you're doing commercials, you can play while and you just go down, get up, you're done. So it's very, very simple, very easy and very little effort, but it's definitely worth it. Um, so yeah, those are my three. Um, and so I got my next episode of Hashtag Lethal, Hashtag Skinny People, Stay Skinny, uh, Exercise Routine, and I will be doing a Hashtag Lethal, Hashtag People, Stay Skinny, 
our eating routine in a little bit. I was showing you three simple, easy comfort foods that can make healthy for you, whether you're pregnant or not, for every meal, plus snacks, with little effort in little time. Because you are like me, you hate preparing food, you hate spending the time and effort while you're like making food, especially if you're really bad at making food. I don't have that problem, thank God. Um, I've been blessed to be able to fry eggs and make pasta. Um, I mean, I'm not like a chef making pizzas and stuff, like, you know, nothing over the moon, you know. And so, yeah, I've been pretty blessed about that kind of stuff. But <laughs> I'm really lazy, so I hate doing that stuff. So I will be showing you some three simple steps for making comfort food healthy in less than 10 minutes. Yep. Um, not only that, I will be even doing a dessert special in a couple of weeks for April Fools. Yes, I know. My first VDAS will be a hashtag April Fools. See people, say skinny. Dessert special, uh, which I'm really excited about. Um, um, I'll be talking about all different desserts for all different kinds of things, especially movie related desserts, which I know is not really a big force for some people, but it's. Sounds fun and interesting, and I will definitely be doing that. I'll be doing desserts inspired by big time movies that have come out this year, such as, um, I don't know where now, um, Veronica Mars. If you're a big marshmallow fan like I was when I was younger, um, it, they came up with which I was so glad to say about. I was like over moved with that. And they have a bunch of other fun movies. Uh, a lot of that from movies actually came out this year, um, and a lot of sequels and stuff. So I will be doing a lot of different desserts based on those and this normal average kind of like desserts you find like traveling, especially since this uh, traveling time, um, well it's really a travel time, and also different desserts just in general that you find during spring time and uh, comfort desserts. Um, and I will start doing that every week as a bonus um, during VDAS. Um, every week I'll be doing 10 desserts. One inspired by movies, one inspired by travels, one inspired by comfort, one inspired by springs, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, yeah. Um, anyway, um, Call from Sarah. Sorry about that. Anyway, yes, yeah, so I'll be doing a special, dessert special every week during VS, and if it goes well, I make it to you into the future. So I hope you enjoyed this first ever hashtag skinny people has hashtag like if you will hashtag skinny people say skinny God that's a lot sorry uh, exercise special I will be confused every week I will do my first food right as I said it's three courses two snacks um on hopefully Tuesday Wednesday I don't know we'll see uh but it will definitely be preparing next week not this week sorry guys um. And I will do another exercise as well next week. And once we hit April 1st, I will start the first ever hashtag skinny, like people hashtag skinny, people say skinny dessert special. And it will go, we'll continue for that. So yes, I know you guys will enjoy it. I'm so excited to do it. I just found out a couple of weeks ago that I'm doing it. Um, my friend who's helping me with these, um, kind of like interested ideas. He's like, oh, you should do these. I'm like, oh my God, that's a brilliant idea. Because I, not a extraordinaire, like, pastry, whatever stuff, but uh, I'm obsessed with baking, I love baking, I make, I, I have to say, I make pretty good desserts, so, uh, it, that, if, that compared to my cooking, it's a lot better, um, so, and that, I will also, may not be 10 minutes, but it will be pretty quick, I guarantee it, and not only that, I'm showing you how to make unhealthy foods healthy, which is a big thing for me, because I am a big sweet tooth, I love chocolate and dessert and all that, and I have a pretty bad problem with that being healthy. Um, I don't eat a lot, so it's not as bad. But if you're unlike me who eat desserts a lot, I will show you how to make it healthy for you so you don't have to worry about being unhealthy when you eat desserts. So, yeah. Um, so excited for future updates. Uh, a lot of new videos coming your way. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys let me know if you try out these exercises, if they work for you, if they don't work for you, what up. Uh, if you have any adaptions, let me know. I am accepting videos of people doing these exercises 
or adaptions of those series, and I will post them on my view if they're really good, on my channel if they're really good. Uh, view. Uh, um, if you guys have any questions about anything, I will be doing a Q&A vlog really soon, so send in your questions now. Um, yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, this has been a really long view. It's been almost 30 minutes. This may not completely go through. Sorry, guys. Um, I may have to split it up. So, yep. Thank you guys for watching, and yeah, I'm gonna go now. Check my, my other videos. Bye.